Hey guys, what's up? Vicious here. Uh, today I'm going to have a really useful tutorial for everybody on YouTube. Uh, this is a video encoding tutorial. And uh, what I mean by video encoding is how you're going to process your video when you're compressing it to its final form that you usually would upload to YouTube or possibly keep on your computer for archiving. I've seen lots and lots and lots and lots of people, you know, not doing this nearly as good as they could be doing it and saying things like how do I get my video to fit on YouTube because it's too large uh, and this that, and the other most of the videos I do are fraps recordings from the computer fraps losslessly captures the video uh, directly from your game to your hard drive and uh, but they're really large files it records it into chunks each chunk is uh, 3.9 gigabytes and every time it hits 3.9 gigabytes if you're still recording it starts a new file so I'm working on a Magica tutorial right now and I just finished putting my video together here in uh, Sony Vegas behind me that was a 14 minute long video and it ended up recording 39.8 gigabytes worth of video to the hard drive directly from Fraps so that is a ton of space and uh, what people usually do I mean and it's a very normal thing it seems like a logical thing to do is they're gonna from their video editor find their settings that they like to to use to render and save it to its final format uh, but here's the trick here's my secret and I'm gonna share it with everybody finally today I don't encode my videos I don't compress my videos from my video editor. Uh, I actually will be rendering this project into another lossless format, so it's going to be very large, just like Fraps. And the only reason I would be doing that is so I can encode it with another program afterwards without losing any quality. I only would do this if I need to edit my video inside of Sony Vegas. I'm going to show you another way to do this in a minute where you can encode the video directly from Fraps to the final compressed format without having this middle step. The only reason I have the middle step for this particular project is because I have uh, the game's video, the game's audio, and then my audio track. And I had to splice them together, so I had to do some editing. So anyways, uh, there is no lossless codec that Sony Vegas has that I'm aware of, and I have a very good one I want to share with you. There's actually two really good ones. One is Huff YUV, uh, which is pretty good. And there is the one I use, Lagarith. So I'm not sure how you spell it exactly. Okay, there it is. You spell it L A G A R I T H. Lagarith Lossless Video Codec. And uh, go to their website. I just searched it on Google and download the codec. It's a free download, it's a very small download and once you've installed this you will have it as an option. It's Sony Vegas and I'm assuming Adobe Premiere and others as well. So now I can go to File, uh, Render As, I'm going to render this project. I need to select under Sony Vegas Video for Windows and then I have to go to this custom tab here. And normally this would be populated with Probably, uh, I forgot which one it's on. I think it's the Sony codec that's normally there, but you want to select the Lagarith lossless codec. You want to go to configure, uh, go ahead and set the color output to YV12, and enable null frames and use multi threading. You can, don't, uh, don't use this one, and don't use this one. Frame rate, you have to pick the frame rate for your project. Mine's 30 frames per second. It's a fraps recording and it has a, a perfect 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. And it's a progressive scan. These are all, you know, depending on your own project. But having that set up properly, interleaving, I'm not going to worry about right now. Under audio, I'm just going to go with uh, PCM uncompressed which is like another lossless format for audio it's basically a wave basically a wave file and I'm gonna go ahead and let this I'm gonna save it to let me find a good spot here 
I'm going to put it on my D drive since my files are located on the N drive. It'll uh, let it run a little bit faster if it's not CPU bottlenecked because it can read off of one end right to the other hard drive. And we'll let that run. Now I'm not going to make you watch this whole encoding process. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here and come right back with the next step that we're going to take. Okay guys, here we are. We're back for the second part of this video encoding tutorial. Um, my file that I exported from Sony Vegas is done. I named it Magic uh, Tutorial and it came out to be 32.5 gigabytes. And if you remember, the original source files from Fraps were 39.8 gigabytes. So I lost, uh, I actually shrank it down quite a bit even though it's still lossless because the uh, lagger with lossless codec is better than the one Fraps uses. And uh, just in case you're wondering, the encode from Fraps took about 28 minutes on my computer. So it took about twice as long as the actual footage was, which isn't too bad. Uh, a reminder, lossless means that absolutely no quality was lost in the encoding process. So if I lost these source files and uh, had to put this back into an editor and encoded it again, I would still be keeping the original quality that I had. And that's why lossless is so important if you're going to be going from one program to the next. So multiple editors or encoders or anything like that, you always want to use a lossless format. So now the advantage is it's a little bit smaller, uh, it's a really great codec, and it's all in one file. So now these Fraps videos, which were broken into pieces, which is a problem if you wanted to do something with it sometimes, uh, is now just one file. Now here's the part where we compress it with our final encoder. I use X264 as my video codec, and I use AAC as my audio codec, Nero AAC uh, specifically. And uh, both of those are command line tools, and I used to always use them in the command line. So I'd create uh, bat files and type in manually all the code and script that I needed to encode. Uh, but there is a really great GUI out there now called MeGUI, MeGUI. I don't know how you want to say it. But this is a, a program that I really, really highly recommend to you because it still gives you all the power that you would have when you uh, encode from the command line, but it lets you access it easily without any of that knowledge. Uh, it's just a front end that actually contains several of the leading free open source tools out there. It uses media info so it can read accurately the data of a video file, it uses 7-zip, it uses x264, uh, DG index, mp4 box, um, mkv merge, Nero AAC, FLAC, VOBSUB, uh, has all these things built into it and conveniently enough it will download all of these for you and constantly update them to newer versions for you so I mean really I mean you can't beat that now there's one thing I want to tell you now because if you guys actually follow this tutorial and try to encode your next video like the I do it, you're going to run into a, one problem that I know that you're going to run into. And that's when you do the <coughs> audio encoding to AAC, you're going to get an error and you're not going to know why. Uh, and that's because Nero AAC is actually free for public use, but due to lic licensing issues, no other program can include it with its program. So you have to manually go to uh, Nero's site, just go to Google and type in Nero AAC and you'll find it as your first result here. And it'll tell you the Nero AAC codec is free, blah 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 blah, but you have to agree to use it for your own self. And Once you download it, instead of MeGUI you have to go to Tools, or actually Options, Settings, and uh, here, External Program Settings and you have to tell it the path to the Nero AAC encoder EXE. If you don't have that set when it tries to encode with it, it obviously won't work. So here is the first step to using MeGUI. Maybe the most complicated part, but again, it automates it for you. Uh, you don't plug the video file directly into this program. You have to plug it in an AVI synth script. Uh, an AVI synth, what that is, uh, it has a great wiki and everything it's a frame server basically that feeds the video to a program and it has lots of different plugins available for it and filters so you can uh, make your video better if you learn the filters but we're not going to worry about that today 
just know that you have to create a script first and uh, so you're gonna go to tools AVS script creator it's gonna tell you uh, your video input you just click on this and browse to your video in this case we're gonna go to my fraps folder and we're gonna find that video file and it's gonna open up in a preview window for you which I'm just gonna close and it's gonna tell you your, your input uh, display aspect ratio is 69 you can change it if you need it to change it for some reason you can do anamorphic you can crop it resize it you can do all that from this first page we're not doing any of that we're leaving it as is on the filters you can change the frames if you frames per second if you needed to flip it upside down if you needed to these need to be put in your de-interlacing everybody should just click on this analyze button and it will automatically analyze your video and determine if it's interlaced or, or not interlaced if it is interlaced, it'll automatically detect the field order and the proper deinterlacer. Because deinterlaced de video is much better. It doesn't show those jaggy lines going through it. I know that my fraps footage is progressive because I've encoded it many times, so I can skip the analysis. Um, noise filter. I'm going to use the minimum noise, which is going to use the undot. If I go to my script over here, you can see that it plugs in the the undot filter which is an AVI synth filter that uh, removes small little pieces of noise out of the video that you can't see with your eye you could not see it uh, but because there's less stuff to compress in the video it actually gives you a free compression boost so always use that if you if you can and that's all we're gonna worry about if I had typed this into a notepad file this is what it would look like but because I'm using the major UI uh, program it automated all that for me. So if I hit save, it's automatically going to save that script file and to plug it in. And this is where we're going to pick our encoder. There's several encoders available: uh, XVID, X264, and uh, I'm going to use X264. I'm going to make sure my file format is MKV because that's the container I like best. And audio input you can uh, pick the file directly for this. So we'll pick the file again. And like I said, I use Nero AAC. Um, you can actually get away with as low as 32 kilobits per second easily. It'll still sound great because uh, the AAC codec is so efficient. For high quality video stuff, I go with like 96. And for YouTube, I might go with like 64. Or still with 96, it just depends. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with 96 on this. And for the extension, you can go MP4 or M4A. I go with M4A. It just means MP4 audio. It just helps me uh, di differentiate my my files when I'm looking at them in my Windows browser. So, uh, onto the settings by clicking on configuration. Uh, the more recent revisions of X264 have a preset, so you don't have to set every single setting you can just pick a preset and I always go with the slow preset which is really good uh, but going into the individual settings there's so much here uh, real quick I'm going to show you something uh, type in me wiki in Google and you'll find this wiki and go to the x264 settings here's a really great wiki that explains all the settings for x264 if you want to learn more about it and maybe customize these settings more, then I recommend this page. This is a really great page. But like I said, the preset is really good for me, except I'm going to make one change. The deblocking filter, since this is video game footage and video game is very, uh, very detailed, like pixel by pixel detailed, unlike recorded video from a camcorder, which isn't very detailed, I'm going to lower the deblocking strength down to negative one and the threshold down to negative one. This helps uh, preserve the details when I encode. And uh, another thing, no matter what you're encoding with, if you choose to use XVID or DivX or something like that, and they're not as good, they're older, but if you're using that because it's faster or because that's what you prefer, um, the one thing you can do if you're not already doing it to make your encoding much better, instead of using a constant bitrate, like a lot of people do, you know, using a constant bitrate that they use 4,000 or 3,000, 
use either an average bitrate so that it uh, adjusts itself. It uses more bitrate when the video file needs it and less when it doesn't. This will give you a smaller file and a higher quality video. Or best yet is to use a constant quantizer or whatever, which is uh, what I use. And uh, for X264, like 18 is like incredibly good. Again, if you just leave your mouse over or something, it tells you what it does in this front end. Uh, and 24 is still really good. I'm sticking with like 20. So I'm going to hit OK to accept these presets. Now it encodes your video in this top section and it encodes your audio in the bottom section. Any video encoder out there is doing that separately. It just doesn't let you configure it separately like this because I can actually queue one up and then queue the other up. And when I go to the queue, you'll see that they're actually separate jobs. So you can only do one at a time and you can choose to only do one and not the other if you needed to. So there we go, this is our video encoding, this is our audio encoding. I'm gonna go ahead and, and start this encoding process. I'm gonna let it run and come back with you when it's done and we'll look at the final step to putting this together, okay? All right, so our encoding is finished. Um, it took about 50 minutes. It took 48 for the video and less than two for the audio. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results of that. So we encoded the video file to an MKV, and here it is. Uh, it came out to only 745 megabytes. And uh, I'll have to tell you something up front. I picked 20 for my quality, which is like actually kind of obsessively high like 18 is like basically lossless sometimes and 20 is really high 24 would be great for YouTube and I also picked kind of a high bitrate for the audio too especially for YouTube because it's gonna butcher it so much and uh, this was a 14 minute video that was originally from Fraps it came out to be 39.8 and then uh, from the Lagrith, it came out to 32.5 gigabytes. So we shrank that video down to 745 megabytes. And I guarantee you, if I played it, it would look exactly the same as the original. I could not tell the difference. Probably not in, even in an A-B test where I was playing both videos at the same time on different monitors. Um, but the one thing is, is, this is also only the video. We had to put our audio in as well. Uh, the audio file came out to 9.91 megabytes. So. You'll, you'll notice that we have two files here, not just one, and you're probably used to your video editor or encoder giving you one final file. Uh, and that's because MeGUI gives you a little bit more flexibility. It doesn't want to force you into a final file type. You get to choose what you're going to be putting it into. Uh, when you're putting video and audio together, it's called muxing. And you can see here under their tools tab, it has adaptive AVI, M2TS, that's for Blu-ray, MP4, and MKV. We're going to stick with MKV. I'm just going to pick our video file. We're going to pick our audio file. And if we had subtitles, we could put them in there. If we had chapters, we could put them in there. That's not necessary for this kind of video. We're not splitting it into multiple pieces. So I'm just going to queue it up and start it. It only takes a little bit of time. So talking about something that's important. Uh, the reason I chose X264 and AAC, computers and technology and all this stuff is always evolving. Uh, a lot of people might be sticking with XVID, DivX, and MP3, and those things are incredibly old. If you look up when they came out, they came out a very long time ago. So it's only logical that newer, better codecs have come out since. Uh, when I compare MP3 to AAC, I, I would consider AAC double as good, meaning at the same bit rate, it's about twice the quality of MP3, or at the uh, same bitrate, it's about half the size. So it's like twice as good. I'm sorry, half the bitrate is the same quality, but half the size. So it's a, a really good codec for audio, and the, the Nero AAC codec seems to be the best, and it's also free. And for video, DivX and XVID, they're just old school. They're great for old computers, they don't have the processing power uh, for X264, but HD is standard now. I mean, YouTube has HD. And when you're working with HD, the X264 codec is much better. 
and if you're working with ST, it's still a much better codec. So anyways, um, the final file is here now. This MUX file, 755 megabytes. It's all set. It can be um, uploaded to YouTube and be good to go, and you can keep this one small file on your computer for archiving. And that would pretty much conclude the basic tutorial for you if you were going to follow the process I just went through, which was using a video editor, exporting it to a lossless codec, and then encoding it with our final uh, program. Uh, but one major really goal, uh, big goal I had for this tutorial um, was a totally 100% free way for people to get their Fraps videos encoded and online to YouTube. And Sony Vegas is an editor and it's not free. And you're adding a middle process. You're adding a step that requires encoding and editing and that takes up time. Uh, so I'm actually going to show you a, a bonus section now. This is going to be how to take your Fraps videos encode them directly without any editing or any middle step encoding and have them reach the same exact state. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start that bonus now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a folder here. I'm going to call it Magica Bonus Tutorial. And I'm going to take all my original fraps files and dump them in here. I'm doing that to separate from everything else. And they're in order chronologically based on how Fraps names the files by date and time. So I'm just going to start with the first one, name it to one, second one, name it two, third one, name it three, and so on. I'm going to do that so I have them all named. I'm doing this so I can shorten the file names. It makes the next step that I'm about to do much easier so you won't make a mistake and make your life a little bit less painful there. Okay, so there's our files in chronological order, just named 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 11. What we're going to do is we're going to actually put these files directly into Meiji UI and encode them like I said, exact same result as we had before without the editing. This would be good for people who just want to have gameplay videos that don't require any fancy editing, so they're not going to add titles, intros, uh, mess with the voice track. And keep in mind, when you're recording with Fraps, you actually can still have voice. There's an option on that you can tick that says record Windows input, and if you check that, that means it's going to record your voice through a microphone while you're recording. Now, it's a one-take deal, though. Unlike an editor, you can't change it up it's going to be part of the video file uh, but that's okay because I mean YouTube videos it's, it's stuff you're doing for free uh, on your own time you're not getting paid for it so you don't have to worry about it being super professional I mean all my videos you know I'm not getting paid for this stuff I'm just doing it for you guys so the same thing still applies we have to make an AVI synth script first so I'm gonna to go to tools AVS script creator video input I'm going to go into our new folder and pick the first file. Close the preview. I'm going to do the same settings we did before. I'm going to change this to progressive. Now the noise filter will not work on the Fraps video directly. The codec that Fraps uses is not compatible with that filter, so I can't use that minimal noise filter on this. It'll give me an error. But everything else is still the same. It's still a 30 frames per second recording. It's still 1920 by 1080 and 16.9. So I'm going to go ahead and save this script. And here's where the magic happens. Um, I'm going to be doing a very small, easy script edit manually. This would be what you would be doing if you did not have Meiji UI to make your life easier. You'd be typing this stuff manually. And what we're going to be doing is appending these files. I'm going to be the script for appending a file. We're going to use the same. We're just going to copy this and put a plus plus between it. And I'm going to need to copy this 10 times since I have 11 files. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That should be 11. And so it tells me that it's telling AVI Synth that there's an AVI source, this is its location, that we don't need the audio, and that we're going to append it to the next clip. And here's one thing I'm going to change. I'm going to actually change this to true. 
I should have done that before I copied it. Because I do want it to include the audio. And now I'm just going to go and change the file name. This is why we renamed it, because look how much easier I can do this just by changing the number chronologically. Uh, instead of having to type that file name or copy it in. So there we go. Got that all set. So I've got all file, all 11 files appended. I'm including the audio. There's one space between the plus plus and the end here and there's one space between here and, and the next AVI source line it's just that it doesn't show because the uh, size of the window but that's how it is alright so I'm going to save the script now and when you go into Meiji UI and you run this script it's going to encode all of these together and give you one result file um, Again, I use slow 20, and I changed the uh, the blocking to negative one. If you make the quality uh, a little bit higher, the higher the number, the lesser the quality. Like if I would have gone with a 24 here, I probably would have gotten like a 600 megabyte file. And all, the slower you encode it, the higher quality, but the much longer it takes. I stick with slow, but medium is also probably really good. And uh, for audio, make sure you always use MKV. For audio, use M4A. And for the audio settings, when you install MeGUI, it's going to give you presets to import. And these are all presets. Just stick with uh, either anywhere between 32 to uh, 96 for YouTube. I actually wouldn't go to 32 probably. But for voice only, it's okay. For music, not. And the multi channel high quality stuff here is really kind of overkill. 192 kilobit AAC is over uh, 400 kilobit MP3, so that's really overkill. Um, so we just queue them up and start it up, and you'll get the same exact file and result that we had when we did it with the editor in the middle. Except you will be cutting out that 30-minute encoding time and all that middle process. And you can do this with Fraps, which isn't free, but there is a trial of it, so you can use it for free and Meiji UI and all of its free tools. So you can get all of your computer gameplay uh, online now, free, and have absolute top grade professional results and uh, the smallest file size and the highest quality guaranteed. So that's gonna conclude the tutorial. I hope that it was really useful for you guys. This is, this is a question I see and I just, I kinda feel soured in my stomach when I see how other people are doing it sometimes because they just don't know how much better it could be. But I know there is a lot to take in here. I tried to simplify as much as possible. But I know you're going to have some questions. So feel free to give me some questions that I can answer. And uh, I'll help you guys out with this. So that was it for the tutorial. I'm going to see you guys later. And I'm signing off.